Sometimes it can be shitty when there's a game you really want. You wait a really long time, it takes bloody years to come. But what about those games that you just don't get to play? They were not released in the US, but places like the UK. Many friends, but what does this have to do with this song? It's games that yanks can't whack. The nineteen eighties were an awesome time growing up for a British gamer. Not only did we have great titles released on a weekly basis, all-time classics costing as little as £1.99, that's less than one week's pocket money, but if you had the talent, you could program your own games, send them off to publishers, and not only expect a response from them, have them actually publish it. Of course I'm not saying that every game sent to them was published. Whilst the odd stinker did seep through the cracks, 95% of them were rejected, because they were, well, crap. But in 1985, British telecom owned publisher Firebird came up with the idea of instead of sending the usual polite thanks but no thanks rejection letter, actually release the worst games that had been sent as a standalone compilation. God bless dry British humour, eh? Think of it as a 1980s British equivalent of trolling. So I present to you, don't buy this, five of the worst games ever. And yes, that is actually the title of the set, not just some video title created by me in a desperate attempt to gain extra views. Though it does actually help. Now to lead you into the first game on the cassette, which is a top-down racing game, I'll show you a few comparisons, let you see what the ZX Spectrum was capable of. This is the ZX Spectrum version of Super Sprint. It is a good game. This is the ZX Spectrum version of Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road Racer. It is also a good game, though good luck trying to figure out who the hell you're supposed to be in it. And finally, this is Race Ace on the ZX Spectrum. Um... Yes. You can already see why these are described as the worst games ever then. This insomnia curing title has you in control of the blue racing car, and I use the term control lightly. As not only does your car only move in 90 degree angles, but you need to turn the car around AFTER it's gone round the corner. Two laws of physics broken for the price of one. <laughs> Great! But don't even attempt to race in this game, as when you're not crashing into corners every five seconds trying to figure out the controls, the second an opponent decides to invade the space you're in, and they will, the controls turn off altogether, so there's absolutely zero chance of ever, ever coming in in first. But you do get a choice of speeds your car goes at. This is currently level 20. Would you like to see what it looks like at full speed? Surprise, surprise, it's completely unplayable. It looks like you've got more of a chance as your car initially appears to be faster than your opponent's vehicles, but it's an optical illusion. They move far ahead every time you turn your vehicle. But then again, what do you expect from a game that can't even make its blooming mind up what it's supposed to be called in the first place? Ace Racer? I thought you were called Race Ace a minute ago. But this is the quality of don't buy this we have to look forward to. The second game on the list is Fido. You play as Fido, obviously, a diabetic golden retriever who has to eat every five seconds or he'll drop dead. But Fido's mission is to defend his blue garden from spinning moles by sitting on them and whacking them with his tail. And you complete each level by maxing out the amount of Christian burials you can give each mole in the garden. Level 2 ramps things up when Fido defends the mole menace from attacking a multi-storey car park, for some reason, whilst dodging an easily avoidable canary, whose main form of attack seems to be slowing down the entire bloody game. And level 3, which is actually the final level, Ups the difficulty one more notch by having a stroke-afflicted cat throw door keys at you. It's a playable game, I suppose, but it's got the longevity of one of those Tiger handheld games, 
as it is incredibly repetitive incredibly quickly. Game 3 is Weasel Willy. Whilst at first glance one may be forgiven for mistaking the game's title as a type of erectile dysfunction, Weasel Willy is actually a poor man's snake. Poor as in, for starters, the creator clearly has no clue what a weasel actually looks like in the first place. So we're subjected to this obese, jaundiced, suffering gingerbread man instead, who has to avoid mouldy chicken drumsticks and his own strangely uniform footsteps. Otherwise, we're informed we've blown it. So Willie has to traverse around the screen unopposed for long enough to move on to the next level. Which is actually a lot harder than it sounds. Not because of any actual difficulty in the gameplay, no sorry. It's because the chicken legs spawn randomly, sometimes in inescapable positions so you can't even complete the level, and sometimes when you die, you'll spawn inside a drumstick, killing you instantly. So... moving on. Game 4 is the imaginatively titled Fruit Machine. And well, it's a fruit machine simulator. These were a dime a dozen on the 8-bit computers, mainly as any Moron could program one. But the instruction manual's description of this game will give you a far better explanation of this title than I possibly can. This mysterious original new game requires skill, timing, nerve and absolute concentration. Packed with high drama, Fruit Machine should be reserved for that part of the day when time is not important. Such as 4 o'clock in the morning while you are sleeping. And that is honestly what it says. But it's just a tedious one-armed bandit simulator that moves incredibly slowly as a program has no clue how to make more RAM-friendly sprites and spinner images. And so, we come to our final game. Yes, it's the sequel to Fido. You gotta wonder what was going through the programmer's mind when he decided to make a sequel. <laughs> when they thought Fido was crap, but I'll have the last laugh with Fido 2 Puppy Power. <laughs> so how can you possibly improve on a gaming masterpiece of a Labrador sticking its ass on a spinning mole's head? Easy! They gave him the ability to shoot lasers out of his eyes. Fantastic! Shigeru Miyamoto, eat your heart out. But is it any better? Of course not! The only difference is you shoot these big nosed things from Monty on the run to gain health now, and Fido has learnt the superhero like ability of being able to move up. But aside from that, it's the exact same game. But that's the sort of innovative evolution you'd expect from a game that uses a catchphrase from a Scooby Doo character that no one ever likes as its subtitle. So as it stands, you can't exactly review or give the old angry reviewer treatment to a game that openly admits it's supposed to be rubbish, can you? Even if, ironically, several publishers didn't exactly get the joke back in the day and scored it anyway. Sinclair user gave it 2 stars out of 5, and Sinclair Programs, a magazine I've never even heard of, gave it 9%. Then again, this is also coming from a magazine whose preview story for Don't Buy This consisted of screenshots from completely unrelated games. But if you're into bad video games, and I don't know why you actually would be, then it's well worth searching the web for a ROM of this game. And no, I'm not promoting piracy. The instruction manual even demands you copy the hell out of this game. But is this the British Action 52? Oh, no, 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 no. There's one title that's far more worthy of that accolade. Game Yanks Card Wank is sponsored by Spoonie's Ice Cream. Spoonie's Ice Cream. Cause Noah One does tastier ice cream.